Check, check. All right. Hey, shalom, shalom, shalom. Israel, most high in Christ, bless. Most high in Christ, bless. All right, let's rise and face Jerusalem.
men of Israel, blow trumpets. Our Father, in heaven, will be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. This day, our daily bread, forgive us our debts, and we forgive our debtors. It's not to Lord, Lord, we thank you for this blessed day. We we pray that you continue to watch over us, Lord. We pray you continue to watch over us, Lord. We pray you continue to put your spirit upon us, Lord, to continue to wake up thy people to lead and guide thy people unto all righteousness, Lord, to do the things that you ordained us to do, Lord, and have it eternal life. We pray you continue touching those, Lord, without, Lord, that they may wake up, Lord, and see the examples who have been set before them, Lord, to keep thy word, to fear thy name, Lord, to continue to walk in thy law, statutes, and commandments, Lord, knowing who they are as a people, as a nation, Lord, rising up to walk up right before thee, Lord. Lord, we pray you continue to bless our bishop, bless the deacons, the captains, officers, brothers and sisters, Lord, who are walking up right before we keeping our laws, statutes, and commandments as you ordained us to do, Lord. Coming back to the marriage, Lord. Coming out the world, doing the ways and things of the world, Lord. Lord, we pray you continue to bless us and keep us, Lord. Humble us, Lord. Pray for those sick and with child among us, Lord. Those who are watching, Lord, we pray you continue to bless them. Continue to open up new doors for our people, Lord. All these things we ask. Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right. Hey, we got a little, little something going on with our little technical difficulty this morning. We ask you to bow with us. All right. Check, check. Can you can you hear me? I'm pretty good. Everything good. I can't see anything, but we good. All right, cool. Hey, Shalom Israel, Most High Christ yeah. Bless. I'm Officer Micah out of Houston Camp. I'm Officer Atheneal. I'll be reading for you today, Officer. All right. And we got Soldier Jotham in the IT. All right. All praises. Hey, today, 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 we're going to talk about Judah. Who is Judah? And we just can't make up who Judah is in our own mind. Judah is found in the scriptures. Hey, matter of fact, give me that one real quick. Let's open up with that. This is Genesis 28, 32, 32, 28, with our forefather Jacob. Let's open up with that. Who, you know what I want? Yeah, that's what I want. When, yes, yes. All right, so we want to know who is um, who is Judah, all right? But we got we to, gotta, you know, build up to the point to find out who he is in all those questions, or matter of fact, this main question is in the Bible. Your answers, any question you have about the Bible, history, is in the is in the Bible. All right. When you think about Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, um, the inheritance, the promises, who was they given to? It was given to our forefathers. Out of all nations, he was only dealing with. All right, we came up. Our praises, our tea on it. I can see it now. He was only dealing with our forefathers. And now, um, got another scripture you want to pull and study that one. <laughs> Go to, I uh, believe it's um, First Chronicles. First Chronicles uh, 16, 11. So, who was the promises given to? We want to we take our time and really find out who is Judah. That's the question. Who is Judah? Is that what I'm looking for? Let me see. Give me one second. I will get like the bitch and be like, talk while I find the scripture. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, I want First Chronicles 16 and 11. All right, so who is Judah is the title of the class today. All right, so uh, hopefully we have a scribe on, uh, on deck out there. Uh, what was his name? Uh, pa Pablo. He usually be doing a pretty good job at that. But nevertheless, let's see who is Judah. Uh, because like I just said, now, the Most High God was only dealing with one person, right? Started with our forefather, Abraham. And let's prove that. Read that. This is the book of First Chronicles, chapter 16 and verse 11. Come on. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. 
Remember his marvelous works that he has done, mm -hmm. his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O ye seed of Israel, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen one. Right, right. So now it's already diving into who he's speaking to. Uh, he said, O ye seed of Israel, his servants, ye children of Jacob, his chosen one. Let's go get that over there in Genesis I was asking for. All right, so now he was talking with, um, in his opening, you seed of Israel. All right, so let's dig back real quick and see who was this Israel. Come on. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 49 and verse, you want to start at 8? Mm -mm, I want 32, Genesis 32, 28. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we're dealing with our forefather right now. Come on. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 32 and verse 28. Mm -hmm. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, uh -huh. but Israel. Right. You see For that? That's what we was reading over here in First Chronicles. Go ahead. For as a prince hast thou power with God. Right. So you see that? He never made this type of statement with any other nation. He said this about our forefather, Jacob, for thou have power with God. Read that again. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, uh -huh. but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men right. and has prevailed. You see that? So he, he let our forefather know that he had prevailed. All right. In the same uh, intensity our forefather had. The same thing that Judah had. We're going to show you that Judah had the same type of spirit to prevail. All right, let's go back to First Chronicles. All right, who is Judah? It's plenty throughout the Old Testament and the, all the way to the New Testament. That's one thing I learned about when it comes to the Bible. You have to read the Old Testament to understand the New Testament. You have to. Ain't no way around it. It wouldn't even exist if it wasn't important. It wouldn't be all compact in one book if it wasn't important, okay? You just can't take the book and just read half of it and think you understand the whole thing. That's like when it comes to, say, like if you was going to put a car together and or, or, or a puzzle or something and you um, read half the instruction, no, you're going to miss what's the beginning parts to putting this car together or, or figuring this thing out through the manual. Well, it's the same thing with the Bible. You're going to miss who's the, when he talk about the Jews or drafted in, uh, there's no Jew, no Gentile. You're going to miss the beginning parts if you jump in the middle of the book like that. So that's what I want our people to continue to understand. Those who have already woken up understand those things. But those who are waking up now to who they are, you have to learn to, you have to go back and read the history, what happened to the Israelites. All right? Come on. This is the book of First Chronicles, chapter 16 and verse 13? Mm, yes. O ye seed of Israel, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen one, mm -hmm. he is the Lord our God. He's not everybody God. And people get mad when you say that. They think that you're a racist, you're a hater, you're selfish, you're, you know, all about you, and you're, you're big-headed. But you only read what the Bible says. And it goes to show you that the other nations do not believe the Bible. Even our people, even our people, when they want to continue to join hand in hand, when the scriptures say you're not supposed to do that, join hand in hand. Even with our people that want to do that, they don't believe the scriptures as it is written. You know, another thing that, that gets me is when they think that we take scriptures out of content, when you're only reading it for what it says. Read it again. O ye seed of Israel, his servant, mm -hmm. ye children of Jacob, his chosen one. You see that? We didn't put that in the book. It said that, that they are his chosen ones. The seed of Israel are his chosen ones. Read that again. O ye seed of Israel, his servant, uh -huh. ye children of Jacob, his chosen one. Come on. He is the Lord our God. Read. His judgments are in all the earth. Come on. Be ye mindful always of his covenant, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. You see that? Say, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
even a thousand years later, he's still only dealing with the Israelites. A thousand generations. A thousand generations. You know what that means? That means forever. He's only dealing with the Israelites. Okay, read. Even of the covenant which he made with Abraham. Your dad go right there. He's trying to show you. He made a covenant with Abraham. Go ahead. And of his oath unto Isaac. He made an oath with Isaac. Read. And hath confirmed the same to Jacob for a law. And to Jacob for a law. Okay, come on. And to Israel for an everlasting covenant. There you go right there. And to Israel for an everlasting covenant. So it's showing you who he's dealing with. That's the point of reading this. Was that it? Okay. I only want it down to 16. Um, okay. Uh, read 18. No, no, no. That was it, 17. So it was showing you the, who he's dealing with. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and then the children of Israel. Right? So um, let's go back. Let's go to, let's go to Genesis. Let's go to Genesis 49 and 1. Let's start at verse 1. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 49 and verse 1. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Right, so he gathered his sons together. And he's going to let them know what's going to happen to them in the last days. Uh, pretty sure everybody uh, heard of terms like um, uh, the, the last days or when the last days, different terms like that. What well, is the way to referring to? Okay. Um, scripturally, when it goes to um, Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is he that follow it. That's what it's really going into. All right, the end of the world. What's supposed to happen at the end of the world? It's really going to be a change in power. That's what's supposed to happen. That's what's going to happen, okay? But what's happening to him in the last days, right? Let's see. Read on. Gather yourselves together and hear, ye sons of Jacob. Come on. And hearken unto Israel, your father. Okay, hearken unto Israel, your father. I believe a soldier at the door. A hearken unto Israel, your father. Drop down to verse 8. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 49 and verse 8. Come on. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Uh-huh. So now, who are we dealing with? This is the reason why we came over here to find out who Judah is. Read that again. Judah. Thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Okay, so now remember, this is in the last days. This is he whom thy brethren shall praise. Who are his brethren? The 12 tribes of Israel. The rest of the 12. The other 11 tribes. Okay, so he said he is whom thy brothers will praise. Oh. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemy. Uh-huh. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Right, right, right. So he said that thy hand shall be in the neck of thy enemies. Who is he referring to? He's talking about Judah. Why would his hand be in the neck of his enemies in the last days? Okay. So the characteristics will show you the things that Judah would be doing in the last days. To show that his hands is in the neck of his enemies. We'll get into it. We'll get into it. Go to um, go to Jeremiah before we give you some visuals and things like that. But we got plenty of visuals for you. We want to show you about his hand being in the neck of his enemies. Okay? Watch this. But where at? Come on. Give me Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 14. This is the book of Jeremiah chapter 16 and verse 14. Uh-huh. Therefore, behold, the days come, said the Lord, come on. that it shall no more be said, the Lord liveth, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. So, historically, he's letting you know who he's talking to. Who's the audience? Who he did this um, miracle for brought him out on dry land. It ain't going to be no more said he brought the children of Israel 
out of Egypt. Okay? Because that's who he was dealing with. Read. But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. From where? From the land of the north. What is this called today? The Bible terms, in, the, in these times when it was written, it was called the land of the north. It's a prophecy. Today it's called North America. Okay? So he said, he ain't going to say no more that he delivered you from the land of Egypt, the children of Israel. But he delivered them from the land of the north. That's going to be the new deliverance right there. Read. And from all the lands whither he had driven them. Wait a minute. So remember, if our people understand the history, when you read this prophecy, he said in Deuteronomy 4.27 that he scattered them in the corners. Right? He scattered them amongst the other nations. So now, read that again. But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands whither he had driven them. And I will bring them again into their land uh -huh. that I gave unto their fathers. Uh -huh. Behold, I will send for many fishers, said the no, Lord. No, that was it. Go back to, um, go back to uh, Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 2. And verse 6. This is the book of Zechariah, chapter 2, and verse 6. Come on. Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north, uh -huh. said the Lord. Come on. Remember, For when the flee is talking about um, the ways. Okay, come on. For I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heaven. He scattered us across the four corners of the earth. Matter of fact, hold that. Let's go read that real quick. Go give me that one that I just quoted in Deuteronomy 4.27. So he said he scattered them throughout the four winds of heaven. Come on. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 27. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen. Right. Let's go back to Zechariah and let's read the prophecy where he said he's going to bring them from where he scattered them. This is the book of Zechariah, chapter 2 and verse 6. Uh -huh. Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north, come said on. the Lord. Come on. For I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heaven, said the Lord. Deliver thyself, O Zion, mm -hmm. that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. You see that? That dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. Where are we dwelling with him at? in the North America, all right? That's what the bulk of we are, okay? Hey, go back to Genesis 49 and 8 again. So, um, he said, Judah, thou on whom thy brother shall praise. Come on. This is the book of Genesis chapter 49 and verse 8. Come on. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Read. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy hand's going to be in the neck of thy enemies. Talking about what? Uh, fighting for rights, equal rights, and uh, fighting against the, um, the politics and different things like that. That's what Judah is doing. Yeah, fighting against oppression. That's right. Fighting against the oppression that this nation has been doing. So watch Judah being in the neck of thy enemies. You got the first one? I don't want that one right there that I'm looking at. Yeah, give me that one. Yes, sir. Watch this. This is Judah's hands in the neck of his enemy speaking about this oppression. Come on. Just played about 42 seconds. Zero to, no, no, no. Start zero, zero to 42. You good. We're not interested in interracial housing. We don't want your neighborhood. We want ours to be just as good, see? We don't want a store in your neighborhood, but we don't want you coming in our neighborhood and opening up stores and exploiting us and then go home and throw a bomb if we move next door out in the suburbs. We don't want your schools, but we want our schools to be the highest and the best possible for our black progeny. See, what people don't understand, we are saying, and we're not asking, you see? The die is cast, as I said. We're not asking. We're saying this is the way it's going to be. Uh, young you can stop it right now. 
All right. So that was an example of his hand should be in the neck of his enemy. Just one example. You got the next one? Go up to about minute 240. You got the timeline? 240. Okay, yeah. So the hand's going to be in the neck of thy enemies. Watch this. Come on. This revolution is filled with so many ironies, really. Uh, first, you tell us that it is manly to keep your word. All right? If you are a man, you keep your word. And now all that the black people in this country are demanding, and even the black people in the whole world are demanding, is that you keep your word. You told us we were free. Well, then show us that we're free. You told us that there is justice, equality for all in this country. Well, then kids, stick to your word and let us see the justice and equality for all. Or else admit to us that you're not a man. You're a worm. You're afraid of us. You're afraid to give us equal stand. You're afraid that if you give us equal ground that we will match you and we will override you. You can stop it there. And if that's what you're afraid of us, then, then tell us that just what you're afraid of. Right. But don't. Right. So now look. You just seen two examples of thy hands should be in the neck of thy enemies. Look at the oppression that was happening to our people. That's what they were standing up telling you about. Uh, because uh, uh, some people might not have been around when um, you had literally saying whites only. Different things like that was going on right here in America. Okay? So Judah stood up against those things. Okay? Let's read on. I didn't hear you. Oh, yeah, I do. Whatever we got, let's play it. Go to about 1520 and play to about 1550. It's a short one. Is it on the same one? Yeah, same one. Okay, same yeah, one. yeah, definitely. So watch. Our people are still talking about this oppression. That's what this whole little film is about, this little documentary. Come on. In terms of the, the plight of the black man in this country, there's been no perceptible change. Well, primarily because the white man has no reason to. He enjoys the highest standards of living. His government uh, enjoys dominance in world affairs. Why should he turn to me now and say, I want to share part of my good fortune with you? He has no reason to. I think there's going to be violence. Okay. All right. So, um, he con we're constantly seeing the examples of what they're showing you, the things that they were saying because of the oppression. Okay, we were scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, and we we wasn't treated equally. So this is what Judah hands going to be in the neck of his enemies. All right, giving you examples showing how they rose up and were standing for their people. Okay, uh, read Genesis forty nine again. And eight. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 49 and verse 8. Uh -huh. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemy. Uh -huh. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. All right, so why or how? What, do, what, do, what is the Bible referring to? Give me that in Zechariah. That thy father's brother's going to bow down to thee. What is he referring to? Zechariah 12 and 7. This is the book of Zechariah, chapter 12 and verse 7. Come on. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. So that's what he's referring to about thy brothers are going to come bending unto thee, bowing unto thee. Because why? Look what Judah's doing. These are the examples of the 12 tribes of Israel. What Israel is going through in the last days as their, for, as their father had prophesied unto them. So that's what you're reading about Judah's prophecy, what Judah would be doing. Come on. That the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. Right, right, right. So guess what? Now you have Judah rising up, teaching our brothers, bringing them the truth. And now they're all able to rise up and realize who they are in these last days. The blacks, Hispanics, and the Native Americans was are one nation, but scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, separated. Okay, because 
if you understand the history, there was also a split that happened amongst the nation. Those 12 tribes were not dwelling together anymore. But today, he's saying they're going to be gathered again in these last days. That's what's happening. All right? Um, give me Genesis 49 and 9. So in these last days, Judah is rising up. His hands and the neck his enemies. His brothers are going to come bowing unto thee. All these things are about Judah, one tribe. Come on. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 49 and verse 9. Come on. Judah is a lion's whelp. Uh -huh. What do you do with a lion's whelp? If you want to get the lion right, you'll hit him with the whelp, right? Come on. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. Uh huh. He stooped down. What do a lion do when he stooped down? He's ready to attack. Come on. A young whelp, <laughs> a young lion. Come on. He couched as a lion. He crouches down as a lion. That's his attack mode, Reed. And as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? Okay, so now as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? As an old lion. So now, you really got to put things in perspective when you think about a young lion and then later on when he's an old lion. Let's look at that, that young lion when he was um, standing up for his people. Right, right. A young lion. Hey, give me that one um, with Malcolm X. You got that one? Yeah, so this is Judah as a young no, lion. Not that not, one. Yeah. As a young lion. That's it? No. There you go. What well, is that? That's, that's not it either. That's not it either? Okay, let me get it. All right. Why he find that video? Read that again. Judah is a lion's whelp. Uh-huh. A young lion. Come on. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. Read. He stooped down. Uh-huh. He couched as a lion. Uh-huh. And as when, an old when, lion, he's on who the, shall uh, rouse him up? That's when he's on the attack. As a young lion, he stooped down, he crouched. That's when he's on the attack. Okay? I don't think he have it. I'm, a, I'm about to send it to him. There we go. So as a young lion, he crouched it. Read. I'm asking. Read it again. Judah is a lion's whip. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. Uh -huh. He stooped down. He couched as a lion. Uh -huh. And as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? Right. Who shall rouse him up? Okay. So when he was a young lion, these are things he was doing or saying. This was the spirit of a young lion. Remember, he's talking about Judah. Watch this. Come on. Got the timeline? Let's go. The color of your skin to such extent that you bleach. No, that's 1320. 1320 to 1430. 13, back it up. Oh, that's good. That's good. They charged Jesus with sedition. Didn't, didn't they do that? They said he was against Caesar. They said he was discriminating because he told his, his disciples, go not the way of the Gentiles, but rather go to the lost sheep. He discriminated. Don't go near the Gentiles. Go to the lost sheep. Go to the oppressed. Go to the downtrodden. Go to the exploited. Go to the people who don't know who they are, who are lost from the knowledge of themselves, and who are strangers in a land that is not theirs. Go to those people. Go to the slaves. Go to the second-class citizens. Go to the ones who are suffering the brunt of Caesar's brutality. And if Jesus were here in America today, he wouldn't be going to the white man. The white man is the oppressor. He would be going to the oppressed. He would be going to the humble. He would be going to the lowly. He would be going to the rejected and the despised. Let it go. Let it go a little bit longer. 
he would be going to the so-called American Negro. That's the part we want. You can stop it there. Right, right, right. Excellent, excellent. So it's showing you what? That our people were standing up, rolling up the mind of our people to stand up, be strong, be be courageous. You know, stand for something, quit falling for anything. And that's the spirit our people had up on them. And that was that young lion right there. But what happened? What happened? That's why it says, as an old lion, who's going to rouse them up later on, years later, what happened? Um, they started putting the fathers out of the house. They brought in the welfare. All these political things start happening, and our people fell victim to them. It was all, all devices for Judah to not rise up drugs in the neighborhood. Um, 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 all the, the, the rap music started swaying people's minds, right? All of these different things was put in place. So now as an old line, who's going to rouse them up? Who's going to bring that spirit back in Judah to stand up again? Okay, because uh, another thing that happen, always happens to the people who try to stand up for Judah. For some reason, they end up getting assassinated. They end up some type of death. Our bishop showed it about a week ago. Look what happened to the people who stand up for their nation. Okay, because a lot of people like to say our community, our community. It's our nation. Our nation, the blacks, Hispanics, the Native American, one nation. One nation of people from the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right? Go back and read Genesis again. Who's going to rouse him up? This is the book of Genesis, chapter 49 and verse 9. Come on. Judah is a lion's whip. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion. Uh -huh. And as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? As an old lion, who shall rouse him up? As an old lion, who shall rouse him up? Well, just like today. Hey, did you have one? Did you ever find that one on um, uh, uh, Kyrie Irving or um, what's his name? Yay, ye. Play this one real quick. Who's going to rouse him up? Because remember, uh, for years, for years, 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 you haven't seen Judah saying anything like what we're about to see or what we've been witnessing lately in the media. You haven't been seeing this. So now look at Judah rousing up. Who's going to be able to do this? Ain't nobody but the Most High. Only the Most High can do this right here. Read that. I mean, go ahead and play that. Can't hear it. I mean that we're in, but bring it back. Tribes, of twelve lost tribes, twelve lost tribes of Israel. Who we are? We're not just black. It's unfortunate timing that we're in, but I'm glad that I could stand on the truth. I'm not afraid of these mics, these cameras. I used to be looking everyone in the eye and telling the truth, and I'm proud of who I am. I told y'all I'ma free my people in the name of God. And I will put my life at risk because it's only the truth that's going to set us free. At some point, we got to have a level of resilience. At some point, brothers and sisters, we got to stand on this Bible. At some point, we got to stand on this Bible. He even said, I'm going to set my people free. The only thing you can do is help wake your people up, just like Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and all those other men, what they did. You got to play that one. Say again? You got to play that one with Ali and MLK like they raised them up. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Let's get it. Let's get it. That's where we at right here. Where we're, who's going to do it? Who's mm -hmm. going to do it? Who's going to rouse them up like this? Come on. You, if you apologize for the unpatriotic remarks that you made, I'm not apologizing for nothing like that because I don't have to. I'm just apologizing for what I said to the newspapers and to the press. Mr. Clay, when you uh, pause it, pause it, Mr. Clay, Muhammad pause it. Now, this is the same thing you've seen later on or in here lately. What Kyrie Irving said, he said, Look, I if I offend the people, I just want to be able to wake my people up. That was right, my whole right. intent. Well, that's the same thing this brother's saying right here. I ain't apologizing for, the, you know, the way I said it, but not what I said, but maybe the way I said it. 
But to apologize for who we are, what are you going to apologize for that for? That'd be the same thing like today. If we're saying who we are, then we start retracting everything that we believe in. That man believed that, Muhammad Ali. Kyrie believed that. That's why uh, Kanye West, they believe the things, or yay, ye. They believe the things that they're saying. We believe the things that we're saying. We believe the things that are written. We believe the prophecies. Okay? Play on. Uh, Mr. Yes, Muhammad Ali, either yes, one. Just Muhammad Ali. Start this one again from the beginning. It's a short one. I'm asking you if you apologize for the unpatriotic remarks that you made. I'm not apologizing for nothing like that because I don't have to. I'm just apologizing for what I said to the newspapers and to the press. Mr. Clay, when you... Muhammad Ali, sir. Mr. Clay Muhammad Ali, or sir. Mr. Muhammad Ali, either yes, one. Just Muhammad Ali, When you sir. appeared before this commission before, if I recall correctly, you said you were the people's champion? Yes, sir. Do you think that you're acting like a people's champion? Yes, sir. You can stop it there. Who will rouse him up? Who will rouse him? Only the most high could rouse up the spirit of man. And that's what you see going on. Play the next one. You know, Play there's the so many one. similarities. You know, like Ye changed his name. They didn't want to call him Ye. Ali's changed his name. They don't want to call him Ali. Clashes Clay. Yeah, Kyrie Irving, hey, look, I've apologized once. I'm not apologizing. You know what I'm saying? There's right. so many similarities. Right. It's him being roused up, like you were saying, officer. From the old lion, that young lion, to the old lion. Now, who's going to rouse him up? Right? Because guess what? They, they had stopped doing these things. You haven't seen our people speaking like this. You haven't seen it. The, 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 um, the courage, the boldness that these men spoke with. I've always admired a person that had confidence, when, especially when it comes from our people. I always right, admired right. that. This type of stuff, they didn't want to instill this type of um, boldness within you. They don't want you to see this type of stuff. But you see it today. Every time you see the men in purple on those corners, the same spirit, That's the right. most I had then on his people to rise up, to stand on the truth, the same thing you see today. Go ahead. Play the, play the next one. I will not go 10,000 miles from here to help murder and kill another poor people simply to continue the domination of white slave masters over the darker people of the earth. It is a war that he considers unjust and his conscience will not allow him to do it. Now certainly I would endorse that, I would justify his action and I would give him my strongest support in his doing it. No matter what you think of Mr. Muhammad Ali's religion, you certainly have to admire his courage. Revelations 11, 11. Revelations 11, 11. All right, so that was, they wanted to, uh, Muhammad Ali to go into the uh, military, but he um, had rather... Go to jail. Go to fight go. the Vietnam War. Right. Yeah. Right. So he had rather went to jail to do so. And you had at the end, you had um, Martin Luther King saying that he support his decision. All right. Just like when it comes to um, decisions our people are making today, like these two brothers are making today. They're making those decisions wholeheartedly standing on what they believe in. And that's what you seen back then. You don't see a lot of that today, but you see the most high using these men to do so. All right. And like I say, we the ones that are um, keeping his commandments and realizing who we are, we're doing the same thing. Letting our people know who they are, standing bold on God's word. Because if you're going to inquire anything about us when it comes to religion, uh, who the who the Israelites are, uh, who, who, who are God's chosen people, we're going to read it to you right out of the Bible. How uh, uh, old saying, uh, uh, old saying is, uh, hey, we can read now. <laughs> we can read now. We just want you to to read along with us. Don't take our words to think we making up anything. Read along with us, okay? Because we're going to read you, thus said the Lord, not how we feel, okay? Hey, read that real quick. This is the book of Revelations, chapter 11 and verse 11. This is what you see with Ye and Kyrie, as well as with the Israelites who are 
standing on their feet, keeping God's commandments. Read. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. And they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. Right, right. And great fear fell on them which saw them. Um, here's one. Hey, give me that one. Yep, there you go. You good. Y'all good over there. Too. Give me that one. Here's go some great fear right here. Watch this. Israel, great fear fell on them which saw the them. True ethnicity of Abraham, Jacob, many others. Find out pause it. Islam, pause it. Judaism, now that was that was something we opened up with with uh yeah. First Chronicles sixteen and eleven. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And who was Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Mm -hmm. Okay, play that again. city of Abraham, Jacob, many others, find out what Islam, Judaism, and Christianity have covered up for centuries in regards to the true biblical identity of the so-called Negro in this movie packed with tons of research. Okay, he's, he's free again to believe all of the above. Right. Maybe there's some truth in that, but... Get that intensity on Cap Machine's face. Cause I know what I could have been. All this work I've been putting in, we ain't gonna talk about that cause I should have been. Correction and trials, I took it we in. Three of men, he needed to hook him in. Then he then we check him and book him in. Then lake a fire, what they cooking in? Then lake a fire, what they cooking in? You gonna call me Adam cause I came from the dirt. You know I'm a poppy from birth. Ain't no plan 51 to Yeah, like come join God's nation. Israel. All right. So look. So what he was saying is, um, it would, his name was Skip Bailey. He's, Look, he's yeah. entitled to believe what he wants to, but then if he say it, guess what? The, the other nations got a problem with it. The only thing he's saying is, hey, give me that one real quick. He said, um, uh, that, that, give me that one in uh, Psalms 83. Because he said uh, that uh, a lot of things that he said that their, uh, black people were, were uh, hid who they were, things like, hey, it was already in the Bible that the other nations were going to do that. So the man was just trying to educate his people on some, on some things. Maybe everything in there wasn't um, biblically sound, but some things were in there going into our history, things that have truly happened to us. Okay, read. Uh, you can start at two. Man, this, start at one. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 83 and verse 1. Come on. Keep not thou silence, O God. You see that? That's why he's rousing up Judah to stand up first. Because all of the, our people was upset when those things was happening to us. They was upset standing. Okay? Dying. Okay? Getting uh, hung in trees. Getting assassinated. So what did our people say? Keep not thou silence, O God. Come on. Hold not thy peace, uh -huh. and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. Come on. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Right, and that's what he was trying to show the people. He was only trying to show them, look, somebody that made a documentary about from Hebrews to grow, and the Bible said that somebody going to take crafty counsel against your people. It's all the brothers saying. They take it all oh, your anti Semitic. Wait a minute. He said, How can I be when I know who I am? That's that crafty counsel that they be trying to do. And in smooth words, like the Bible say, that they come with. Read. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Come on. And consulted against thy hidden ones. Uh huh. They have said, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Uh huh. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. That's what they did. That the name of Israel should be no more in remembrance so they forgot who they were. Give me that one, 28, Deuteronomy 28, 37. Let us cut them off. Let us cut them off. It's the whole nation. Even though we're focusing on Judah today, but the whole nation don't know who they are. That's why people couldn't tell you who is the tribe of Reuben today. Nobody could tell you. But the prophecies, it tells you who they are, where they are. The general, I don't even know how to say that, general, general place where they are. The Bible tells you that. Okay, it's already prophesied. 
but you have to understand how to read the Bible with the prophecies. Read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 37. Uh-huh. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. Uh-huh. So he said we're going to become a byword and a proverb. You're going to become um, a Negro. A Negro, that's one. African American, um, Hispanic, uh, Mexican, um, uh, Native American. You can become all of these different names. These are bywords that you're going to become. You're going to go from being a Hebrew to a Negro. That's true. From Hebrew That's true. to Negro. Because if you really, 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 really think about it, watch this. Um, give me Exodus 9 and 1. Watch this, because you 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 you've taken me this way. So let's get this real quick. Exodus nine and one. This is the book of Exodus, chapter nine and verse one. Come on. Then the Lord said unto Moses, "Go in unto Pharaoh and tell him, Thus said the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go." So who was he writing to, or who was he speaking to? Most our God was dealing with Moses, and he said, go tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Read that again. Or no, read verse 2. No, no, verse 1 again. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 9 and verse 1. Uh-huh. Then the Lord said unto Moses. So the Lord, Lord is talking to Moses. Read. Go in unto Pharaoh uh-huh. and tell him. Uh-huh. Thus said the Lord God of the Hebrews. That's the point. The Lord God of the Hebrews. Because today, they have forgot who they were. They took crafty counsel. Now they're calling them by different names. Okay? But this was written to the Hebrews. Now go to the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews. And who was that written to? Who was that written to? Read that title. Who was it written to? This is the epistle of uh, epistle. Of Paul the Apostle to the Hebrews. You see that? So a lot of people may not realize everything you read in the book of Hebrews was written to who? Read the, that again. The epistle of Paul the Apostle. The letter of Paul the Apostle to the Hebrews. His letter, his epistle was to the Hebrews. So how can you get everybody else this this letter was written to them? It's impossible. Chapter 8 and verse 8. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 8 and verse 8. I wasn't trying to go this way, but let's go. Read read, read that. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, Uh when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. You see that? So remember, their names, they forgot who they were. Let's take crafty counsel so they won't know who they are. And in Psalms 83, we just read. Then we went over to Deuteronomy 28. They're gonna be let's let's call them by a different name. And now he said he's gonna make a new covenant with them. Because when they went off into slavery, when he scattered them throughout the four corners of the earth, they don't realize who they are. But we just seen some 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 guys that are relevant today using their uh, the most high is using them to continue to show our people who they are, along with the prophets. The prophets are everywhere throughout the four corners of the earth, letting our people know who they are. But look at these guys, these bigger platforms. The Most High God is using them to let his people know who they are. Okay? It's with the 12 tribes of Israel, with the house of Israel, and with the house of Judah. Deuteronomy, go back to Genesis 49 and 10. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 49 and verse 10. Come on. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. Uh, wait a minute. Um, read 7 and 8 one more time because I got that last video. I want to play with that. Uh, eight minutes. Yeah. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 49 and verse 8. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Come on. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemy. Uh-huh. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Read. 
Judah is a lion's whip. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion. And as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? Right, right, right. So I wanted to show this last one um, of some leaders that had rose up. And say again. One more video. After this one? After yeah, yeah. Thank you, officer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to show this one here um, according to um, the old lion who will rouse him up. Then once again, this is just going to run down. Um, some leaders, some of them may be coons in there. We get it, we get it. But we're just trying to give you a visual of how these men, of some of the faces of the men that has rose up. Uh, we we played um, uh, Martin Luther King or Malcolm X. We played we played some of those guys. But watch this. Let's play this real quick. Martin, Malcolm, Huey, Alvin, Marcus, Richard, Jesse, Adam, Carla, Gordon, James, Philip. Nat showed them not to play with us. Duke, Langston, Thurgood, Robert, Hank, Jesse, Jackie, Muhammad, Paul, Stokely, Mega, Webb. About three Benjamins, a good two Freds. Women like Harriet, Rosa, Ida, Shirley, Sojourner, Madam, Maya, Mary, Bessa, Ella, and Retta. Even baby Ruby was out here applying pressure. Gail, John, Booker, Sid. George, you nuts if you don't know who he is. But y'all, Charles, Roy, Carter, Cease, just for drinking them white folks' water. All kings and queens, yes, for real. And to the ones that we lost, like Emmett Till. And all those that's here, we gon' continue to hold it down. Say it loud, black, and I'm proud. It was All right, all right, all right. So, that was showing you all of those men, uh, maybe a woman or two in there about how they was rousing up. Look at all of the courageous things that they did. They're probably drunk out of the water fountain, you know? All of these was standing up, putting your hands in their neck, not going for that oppression. Those who we just seen, okay? So that's why I had to go back there one time. Now drop down to verse 10. Verse 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, uh -huh. nor a lawgiver from between his feet. Right. So the scepter rulership shall not depart from Judah. Okay. Nor the scepter between his feet. Read. Until Shiloh come. Until Shiloh come. Okay. Um, was that it? And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Right. Unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Uh-huh. Hey, let's go ahead and read that genealogy real quick. Go get that in Matthew. Matthew. I didn't have that written down, but hey, let's get it. Because it's unto him shall the gathering of the people be. When you realize it came from Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and then now it's going to tell you about that rulership. Okay? Read. Uh, yes. And we're going we're gonna to skim through. We're not going to read all of it. This Come is the on. book of Matthew, chapter 1 and verse 1. Come on. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Come on. Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob. We already read that earlier. Read. And Jacob begat Judas and his brethren. So Judah is the forefather of the tribe of Judah. Okay, drop down to verse 6. Verse 6. And Jesse begat David the king, and David the king begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Urias. Come on. And Solomon begat Rohabam, and Rohabam begat Ab Abiah, and Abiah begat Asa. Verse 16. Verse 16. And Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. So he came through <laughs> Jacob. And then he became through Joseph, and then that's who where Jesus come from. Mm -hmm. Read. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. Now, who was David? Remember, he was the king. And the scripture just said, let's go back to Genesis one time. 49 and 10. So this is the lineage, a royal lineage Christ came through. Read. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, uh -huh. nor a lawgiver from between his feet, uh -huh. until Shiloh come. Read. And unto him 
shall the gathering of the people be. Right, unto him going to be the gathering of the people. Um, go drop down. Go. Let's go back to Matthew mm-hmm. and give me um, 21. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 1 and verse 21. Uh-huh. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. So he's going to save his people from their sins. Remember, we just seen a lot of people trying to rise up and do it. A lot of people that was being roused, roused up to stand boldly. But it said that this person was going to do something. Chapter 2 and verse 6. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 2 and verse 6. And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. You see that? He's going to rule, just like it just said in Genesis. Unto him going to be the gathering of the people. He's going to rule and lead them. Okay? Um, give me that one in Genesis. I mean, in our uh, Hebrews. Remember who it was written to, the book of Hebrews. We're written to the Hebrews, right? Hebrews 14, 7 and 14. Unto him going to be the gathering of the people. Read. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 7 and verse 14. Come on. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. So evidence means proof. Proof. It is proof that he came from Judah. Evident, it could be proven. You know, today they go um, with the um, birth certificates. They go with that today. Guess what? A lot of people don't realize that we kept up with our documents. A lot of people don't don't realize that. The people of the book kept up with their documents. So they know. That's why they ask, uh, ain't he the son of Joseph? Mm-hmm. They knew this. Right. Okay? It wasn't no miracle thing that happened to her. Because remember, the scriptures tell us, that's why people have to understand the scriptures. You know, an uh, angelical being can't lay down with a human being. Oh, it, it's impossible. Oh, God say that cannot happen. But yet our people still believe those things. God. That's why you have the, the scripture says that you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Free from all kind of lies, deceits, bewitching, okay? Because that's what happened to our people. We're falling for anything. And you had those men standing up, rising up, not falling for anything. The same spirit is back today, okay? The people are not falling for anything, all right? Judah is on the rise. Um, Read that again. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 7 and verse 14. Uh Uh-huh. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, uh-huh. of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning the priesthood. Give me that limitations, 14 and 2. He sprang out of Judah. Hey, Jotham, look on your telegram and see how I, t- I sent you an image. I sent you an image. He sprang out of Judah. Uh, 14 2, sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, um, Jeremiah. Did, did you get it? A couple of images. Remember, um, you had um, um, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, uh, King David, Solomon, Christ. So now we're going to look at one of the forefathers that came from Judah because it said it, it's evidence he came from Judah. Right? Read. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 14 and verse 2. Come on. Judah mourneth, uh-huh. and the gates thereof languish. They are black unto the ground. You see that? So they call them black. They described it. He was just trying to give you a visual of them. He said they are black unto the ground. What did it say in Genesis 2 and 7? He formed man from the dust of the ground. Using the same words, showing you about their skin tone. Okay? They are black into the ground. All right? Give me that one in Revelations 1 and 12. Start at verse 12. This is the book of Revelations, chapter 1 and verse 12. Did you find it, Jotham? Okay. 
Come on. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. Uh huh. So he said, clothed with a garment down to the foot, one like unto the Son of Man. Why? Because he's seen Christ before. He walked with him. Come on. His head and his hairs were white like wool, uh-huh. as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Now, wait a minute. I didn't send you this image. Let me send you this real quick. I want you to post this. Hold up one second. All right. Hey, while I look for this, go to um, Daniel 10 and 5. Uh, where is this at? Yeah. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 10 and verse 5. Yeah. All right. I just sent you another image. Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked. And behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of euphaz. Mm -hmm. His body also was like the barrel, and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, Uh and his arms and his feet like in color to polished brass. Hey, do you have an image of the the, uh, Christ that, um, that we have at camp? Do you have that image somewhere? Okay, perfect, perfect. Hey, until they find that, go to, so it was giving you the description of Christ, like in color to fine brass. I wish I had asked you guys to get brass for it, but go ahead and put that image up, the the image of Christ. And then give me um, Hosea, Hosea, is that three and four? So why people will say that no one know what color Christ is now? He came from the tribe of Judah. They are black into the ground. Who is Judah? Come on. This is the book of Hosea, chapter 3 and verse 4. Come on. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king Uh and without a prince and without a sacrifice and without an image and without an ephod and without teraphim. Right, so do you have the image of Christ? If not, give me that one. And if you find it later, we'll show it. We'll show that one too. <laughs> uh, now give me that one. Give me that one. Yeah, give me that one. I really wasn't fond of the other one. Okay, so now this is in the uh, Russian icons. One of those books where it has these images in them, okay? And that will be Christ right there in the center with the rest of the disciples, all right? Hey, give me that in, um, give me that in, um, so now we just talked about Christ for a second. Remember, the most I was dealing with Moses. Give me that in uh, Exodus 4 and 6. And then you guys have that image of Moses. Let's get that one up. Oh, let me get that one real quick. Yeah, let me get that one. I'm glad you found that one. Look, so this is what they was describing of Christ. And his, his skin, like in color to polished brass. That's the image right there. His head and his hairs, the hair, the, the hair on his head and the hair on his face. His head, the hairs on his head, and his hairs, the hairs on his face, was white like wool. And his skin like unto polished brass. Let's That's do a Google search for polished brass. Yeah, that'll be great too. Until then, go ahead and get Moses and put up the image of Moses while y'all find that. Put up the image of Moses. Go ahead and read that. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 4 and verse 6. And the Lord said further, furthermore unto him, 
put now thine hand into thy bosom. Mm -hmm. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. Great. And he said, put thine hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again mm -hmm. and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. Now look, see my hand in my bosom and I take it out. It'd be a different color than the rest of my body. Oh, look this way. Yeah. But then I put it back in and take it back out and it's back like the rest of my body. It ain't leopard. That's what he, the example he told Moses to do. Let's read it again. Yep. And the Lord said furthermore unto him, uh -huh. put now thine hand into thy bosom. So I'm going to put my hand in my jacket. Come on. And he put his hand into his bosom. Uh -huh. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. It won't look like the rest of my body. It'll be a whole lot with no pigmentation. If I, if I already didn't have any, what would happen? None, it wouldn't right. be a miracle. Right. Read. And he said, put thine hand into thy bosom again. So I put my hand back in my jacket. Come on. And he put his hand into his bosom Come again on. and plucked it out of his bosom. And I take it out. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. You see that? So he, he turned leopard and then it went back to the rest of his flesh. Giving you an example that Moses had pigmentation. Moses was a colored man. Well, give me that image of Moses real quick before we get that polished brass. Give me that image of Moses. This is the image of Moses. All right? That the Most High God was dealing with who he was talking to. So if he put his hand in his bosom and take it out, that image right there, it would you can really see how his hand would be leopard. Right. And he put it in and take it back out, and it'd be like the rest of his skin. Okay? All right. You can take that one down. Now give me, um, if you got that brass, let's get that brass, and let's get Wisdom of Solomon. These are um, down in the corner. brothers from Judah. Yeah, okay. That right there. Our forefathers. Now, look at this polished brass that the scripture says that Christ would look like. It's taking them somewhere else. Just leave it right there. That's good. Just leave it there. You can't If you can't get the image, no worries. All right, read that. Burnt brass. Okay, there you go right there. Burnt brass. Let's let's go back to Genesis. I mean, uh, Revelations one time, since we have the image up here now, because it is evidence that Christ sprang out of Judah. Judah is black unto the ground. Read. Yep. This is the book of Revelation, chapter one and verse fourteen. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Come on. As white as snow. Put up the other image of Christ real quick so we can follow that along and then we'll get this brass back. That would go. Go ahead. His head and his hairs were white like wool. The hair on his head and, the ha and then his hairs in his face, white like wool. Come on. As white as snow. Uh-huh. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Uh-huh. And his feet like unto fine brass. So if his feet look like fine brass, look at the brass right next to it. Feet like unto fine. That's what his feet look like right there. Uh-huh. As if they burned in a furnace. That's burnt brass right there, folks. So that's why you see um, the nation of Israel in so many different shades of brown slash brass, burnt brass. Okay. All right. Now let's go to um, Wisdom of Solomon. 101. And then give me the image. This is the book, The Wisdom of Solomon. Oh, Songs. Yeah, Songs of Solomon. Come on, stay with me. You know what I want. That's, that's when I'm going to start saying, you know what I want. <laughs> this is give me the, the image of Solomon. You know what I want. <laughs> Come on. This is the Song of Solomon, chapter you got, one. You got Solomon? That's Moses right there I'm looking at. Come on. The Song of Songs, which is 
Solomon. Okay, drop down to five. I am black, but comely. Let's get the image of Solomon. This is King Solomon. That's King Solomon. I went through it earlier. That's Solomon, right? All right, all right, all right. That is Solomon. Here is his King David. I ain't seen you, King David. Let me see you, King David. Just did it. All right. So what did Solomon say? Read it again. I am black but comely. Uh huh. O ye daughters of Jerusalem. So he said, I'm black but comely. Now let's get King David up there. Because remember, what did we read? David begot Solomon. This is David right here. This is David, an image of King David. Then you had um, uh, King Solomon. Now give me that one in, um, what is it, John 129? The Gospel of John 129. This is the book of John, chapter 1 and verse 29. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Mm -hmm. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me. Now drop down to um, uh, what he said. Give me verse 45. This Verse 45. Philip findeth Nathanael, and saith unto him, We have found him, of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, mm -hmm. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Read, drop down to verse 49. Nathanael answered and saith unto him, Rabbi, thou art the son of God. Thou art the king of Israel. That's what I wanted right there. So they called him a king. Why? Because his lineage. His lineage, um, he said, matter of fact, give me that one real quick. Um, um, Acts, Acts chapter 13, Acts chapter 13, start at verse, like verse, let me see, 13 and Twenty. Give me verse twenty, twenty-one. Let's start at twenty-one. This is the book of Acts, chapter thirteen, and verse twenty-one. And afterward they desired a king, and God gave unto them Saul the son of Sis, mm -hmm. a man of the tribe of Benjamin, by the space of forty years. Come on. And when he had removed him. He raised up unto them David to be their king. You see that? So yet King David, King Solomon, and they said that Christ was a king as well. King of Israel, read. To whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Mm -hmm. Of this man's seed of have this God. This man's seed. Remember the genealogy of Christ. Of his seed, read. Of this man's seed hath God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. You see that? So that's what the scripture says. So who who is Judah? Judah have all of these men come from them. Moses, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Solomon, King Solomon, King David, and Christ. And then all of those other men that we seen that was rousing up. And then that great army that you seen rising up as well. We got one more video. Was that it? Uh, the one that's going to kind of close it out. That's what I want. You, okay. Yeah, it's that time. Uh, the one that says the jig is up. Let's play that whole video. Let's play that to close it out. So I hope you got some out of this about um, who is Judah. Yeah. Okay. Come on. Get the volume up. Hey, 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 hey. 
It's your boy Hood. What's happening? What's happening? Listen, about to see a Kanye West thing and about these uh, Jews that he's talking about and probably fake Jews and all this shit stuff going on and about Kyrie Irving checking out this here movie that's been uh, produced by Jeff Bezos on Amazon called uh, From Hebrew to Negroes, things like that. What's really going on is that a lot of black people are starting to come into the truth. A lot of black people. So watch this here now for you black churches, for you black churches, and especially you black so-called Christian churches. Yep. For a lot of you black churches. No, no, no. For all you black Christian churches who ain't teaching nothing but all this here hollering and snotting and falling out and lying to prophet line and fake praying and, and fake speaking in tongues and all this old catching the Holy Ghost and all this old foolishness, all this false doctrine, guess what? <laughs> the jig is up. <laughs> the jig is up. The jig is up. Many black people are coming into the truth of who we really are. The true Hebrews, yep. Yep, the true ones, the chosen. Many are beginning to understand that we are the chosen people of God. Many are beginning to understand that. White folk already know that. But many, many of us are beginning to understand that. So which means that you're going to have to get in your Bible, black preacher. Now you can't no longer walk around in a big long robe that you don't know nothing about what it means. You can no longer be doing all that goofiness. You can stop it there. The g Give me uh, Ezekiel 37 and 10. So the gig is up trying to bewitch our people with all these different doctrines. This is what's happening. This is what's happening. And then play me that one again. Well, um, did you find the one I was I asked you about, Jotham? So Jotham, about the um, the Sea of Israel, the army. Okay, all right, let's read that. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter thirty-seven and verse ten. Uh huh. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet. An exceeding great army. Read. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. These bones are who? These bones are the whole house of Israel. You see that? These bones are the whole house of Israel. Let's, uh, um, there we go. There we go. Let's see the whole house of Israel. One more game before we close out Israel. All right, go ahead. Let our strength be the law of justice. Let our strength be the law of justice. That's why they send their sons and daughters to law school. Brothers, sisters, listen good. There have been several situations that IUIC has gotten involved in, even here in Atlanta. And we hired lawyers. When they found out we were Israel united in Christ, guess what they did to us? They dropped us. We can't represent you. They all stick together. So when we saw that they dropped, yay, we wasn't shocked. This is how the ungodly get down. You know, you want to go to war, you got to call the warriors. Meaning <laughs> about how uh, black people are the real Israelites and all this amazing history. You don't understand. <laughs> you don't got a war by yourself, man. You know, that's why I'm trying to show, brother. You all you got thousands of brothers that think just like you. You got thousands of brothers that think just like you. When it comes to the Bible, when it comes to the Bible, we all have one mind. We are the Jews. We gonna keep these commandments. We gonna come back to our culture. We gonna come out of them songs of singing up. Murdering each other and the hoes and all of that stuff. We separating from all of that. We coming back to our culture that we are the Israelites. God knows. That's right. There you go. There you go. This is the whole house of Israel. All right. So you want to be a part of God's army. It's time to rise up and start keeping his commandments. Like the brother said, the gig is up. He had to also start keeping God's commandments as well. So our people 
Uh, they realizing who they are. But God said what is required of you, okay, is to keep his laws, statutes, and commandments. All right, with that, and hey, we got Soldier Joseph, Soldier Jotham over there helping us out today. Uh, got Officer Agnia with me. I'm Officer Michael from the Houston camp. And with that, say shalom. Shalom, Israel. Just let me know.